among themselves, that they would leave the multitude of the heathen and go forth into a further country where never mankind dwelt. They went into a country where never mankind dwelt. So that lie about uh, the Indians come from the, the Asian people that traveled through the Barren Straits, that's a bold-faced lie being taught in colleges. The Indians are not from the Japhetic people that came over here through Russia. Okay? No. They started coming over here after the Indians were already here, according to the Bible. And in, and in Christopher Columbus D. Ali's, his own memoirs, it tells you that he used second address when he presented his case to the queen that the world was not flat. He knew that they were, the world must have been round because the Bible says it, and the Bible says that people would travel to this new world. That's how he got to the new world or had knowledge of how to get close to the new world. Read. That they might dare keep their statues which they never kept in their own land. And go they ahead. entered into Euphrates by the narrow passages of the river. They went through the Euphrates River. Go ahead. For the Most High then showed signs for them, and held still the flood till they were passed over. Go ahead. For through that country there was a great way to go, namely of a year and a half. And the same region is called Asarif. Asarif means hidden land. So the Most High hid that land for his chosen people. See, and that's why when the Europeans started coming over here, they called it the New World. It wasn't new for us. We were already here. The Jews were even coming back and forth trading with the Indians that were here before the Europeans came here. That's why they call it the New World, because it was new for them. Indians were already, how was it new if people were already here? Read. Then dwelt they there until the latter time, and now when they shall begin to come, the highest shall stay the springs of the stream again. So that's how they, the Indians are getting back to the land. The same way they came over. The Lord is going to calm the waters again. Read. That they may go through. Therefore sowest thou the multitude with peace. So they're going back. The same spirit that came on them to come over here. The same spirit is going to come on their chiefs and their leaders to start getting together to leave this country. All right. Let's go to uh, Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. We're talking about the, the diaspora. Talking about the Gentiles and how we were scattered amongst the Gentiles. You got that? Let's go to Deuteronomy 28 and 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. The Lord says of Israel, if you don't follow these commandments I'm giving you on this now, that all these curses that I'm writing of in these scriptures that I'm giving Moses will come upon you and overtake you. You're going to find out that these people are the children of the curse, and there's no way... It could be the Jewish people today, because they do not fit the curses. No way in the scriptures do it say a European is going to burn up a few other Europeans, and that's the prophecy of them being the Jews. Okay? I don't mean to be insensitive, I'm just letting you know that that's not in Bible prophecy. That's not in Bible prophecy. They use that as a platform to inhabit a land that didn't belong to them. Okay? Read the 15th verse again. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. All these curses shall come on you, Israel, and take you down, if you don't follow me. That's what our Lord said. That's what Ahiah told us. Read the 64th verse. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people, from the one end of the earth, even unto, unto the other. So now, if you don't follow Israel, you're going to be scattered. No longer will you be recognized as a people from the land, because I'm going to scatter you amongst these other Gentiles. That was a curse. Right? Read. And there thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. Because our fathers didn't know about Allah. If you would have walked up to our fathers and say, who's Allah? They'd be like, what? Allah? Who's that? 
Our fathers didn't know about Jesus because we didn't speak Greek. So these are the people that are suffering the curse. You're going to serve other gods that your fathers wasn't serving, even wood and stone. And the two biggest religions, the two biggest religions are what? Christianity and Islam. The wood representing the cross, the rock representing the Kaaba in Mecca. Wood and stone. We're the people of the curse. Read on. And among these nations shall thou find no ease, neither sh shall find no ease. That means we'll get beat, whipped. We won't have our rest. We won't enjoy our children. Who did this happen to, man? Look what happened to the Bleak Wata, you know, Indians, man. They were, they were uh, playing marbles with diamonds before the Europeans, before the Spanish came. And I see some of these uh, Latinos, or I'm going to call my Ephraim Mike, or, or the Issachar, the Mexican brothers, how they relish in this Spanish heritage, not understanding that that's not their heritage. You calling yourself Spanish because the people from Spain came and took you down. So how can you celebrate your Spanish and Latino culture when that's not the culture or the heritage the Most High gave you? You're not Spanish. They gave you Spanish the way the English gave us English. Okay? Read, read that part again. And among these nations shall thou find no ease. Find no ease. Read. Neither shall thy soul, neither shall the soul of thy foot have rest. But the Lord shall give thee there, give thee there a trembling heart and failing of eyes and sorrow of mind. You know what can make you like that? Working. Trembling in the heart. Just all day and night, just working. Just working. If you don't want to work, you get beat down. You get thrown to the streets. Think about this, man. I'm thinking about the Baliko Taino Indians, man. The conquistadors came over. And in one year, they slaughtered a half a million man-child of the Puerto Ricans. A half a million man-child. They had a game where they would play, where they would pull each child one conquistador would get one leg and the other one would get the other leg of a man child, of a little boy, newborn, and pull it apart. And whoever had the majority of the body wins the tug of war. These are the things that was done on their shores. That was done to the Bleakwa Taino Indians. But we soon forget, man. Not that we're supposed to think about any type of vengeance because vengeance is the Lord. But we can't forget those things, man. The reason why they're following Catholicism and all those things, they was afraid of death. So they bowed to their Lord. They bowed to their new lords over there. Catholicism. The Catholics did this, man. This man is Cesar Bogier. He was a thief, a robber, a stealer, a poisoner. He did anything for power. They put him up to be Jesus Christ and had our people follow him and worship him. And we're speaking primarily to our Latino brothers and sisters because you will have this dude tattooed to your shoulder, on your back, on your chest, the bleeding heart of this guy. You have beads with him on there. When really, he represents your slavery. He represents your fall, your takedown. Get Hosea 8 and 8. So in order for us to show you the future of the Gentiles, in order for us to show you the future of the Gentiles, we must first show you what happened with Israel. So Israel didn't follow, so what happened?